said, this should be review. You've seen this stuff before, right? Slope should be a very like, oh yeah, algebra word. Um, what is slope? If I'm talking about the slope of a line, what am I talking about? Rise over run. Um, you've maybe seen it as a fraction before. Um, sometimes people say delta y over delta x. That means the change in y over the change in x. Um, the way we typically write the slope formula, does anyone remember it, if we're using x's and y's? I promise you've seen it before. Slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so you're going to use that a lot with slope, right? The change in your y value over the change in your x value. The rise, so up and down, over the run. And we always run to the right, okay? So you can go up or you can go down, but we will always move to the right to calculate it just to keep consistency. Um, but that's how we'll find slope. So we're basically saying to get from here to here, the slope of that line is how far did we go up and how far did we go over, okay? Vertical change over horizontal change. So if I'm asking you what the slope of this line is, I would label these again, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Could I switch those? Could I call it x2, y2, and x1, y1? Yes. Can I call them x1, y2, and x2, y1? No. Keep your ones together. Keep your twos together. Okay, but it doesn't matter which one's your first and which ones are your second. Um, okay, so if this is my setup, then I'm just plugging it into this formula. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So minus a negative 3. Be careful with that. Um, what do you get in the numerator here? Which one is the numerator, by the way? The top one, yes. What do you get in your numerator? Negative 3. Negative three. What do you get in your denominator? Negative. This is plus a positive. Negative 2 plus 3 would be a positive 1, right? Um, so negative 3 over 1, a better way to say that is just negative 3. So the slope of that line is negative 3, okay? Find the slope of the next two lines for me. So label them x1, y1, x2, y2, whatever makes the most sense to you, and then find that slope and tell your neighbor what you got for both of them. In it. Um, but if we're going to plug this in, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that's 0 over negative 7. What's 0 divided by anything? 0. Okay? So that is a slope of 0, and that's fine. You may have a slope of 0. Okay? The next one, what did you get? That one, 4 over 0. Can you divide by 0? If you plug 4 divided by 0 in your calculator, do you know what it's going to tell you? Error. Divided by 0. Can't do it, right? Um, so when you get that, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right, is 4 over 0. We say that is undefined. That is an undefined slope. Um, you cannot divide something by zero, okay? Um, so let's talk about what that looks like. There are four different pictures here for different types of slopes. Notice this first one is on its way up, right? So if it's rising when you go left to right, if it's on its way up, that is what kind of slope would you say? Positive, positive. yeah, that's a positive slope. Okay, so if it's on its way down, it's a negative slope. Um, the horizontal line, that's this guy. When it's zero, a slope of zero, you get a horizontal line. So this is a slope of zero, okay? Um, the vertical line is when your slope is undefined because you cannot divide by zero and your change in your um, x value would be zero there. Okay. Ari. Just the one. Stay with me. Um, okay, so this next thing then, it says a function whose graph is a line is called a linear function. And we are going to do a lot with linear functions in this class. A lot, a lot. Okay. Um, so linear function. 
An example of a linear function would be what you guys told me, I think it was yesterday, you told me this, y equals mx plus b is what form? Slope intercept form. So when you see an equation like y equals 2x plus 7, okay, that is a linear function. If you graph that, you're going to get a line, okay? So we're going to work with a lot of um, linear functions. Here's your slope intercept form right here, y equals mx plus b. Um, remember, whatever comes in front of your x, your coefficient to your x is always your slope. So it could look like this, y equals 7 plus 2x. This is still your slope, okay? It's in a different spot, but it's always whatever the coefficient to x is. This is going to be your y-intercept. So that b value, that like constant value, the standalone value, is your y-intercept, okay? Um, if you look at this graph, you have a y-intercept here. You also have an x-intercept. X-intercept is where it hits the x-axis, right? Y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis. Make sure you're clear. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Um, so whenever we talk about intercepts, we're just saying where does it hit whichever axis we're talking about. The y-axis would be the y-intercept. The x-axis would be the x-intercept. Questions on that? Okay, moving right along then. Um, so if you're given a slope and a y-intercept, and they say put it into slope-intercept form, this should be the easiest problem you do all day. The form is y equals mx plus b. They're telling us what m is, and they're telling us what our y-intercept is. Now, the y-intercept is the point zero, negative three. So if you're looking at a graph, 0, negative 3 is here, right? What number takes the place of B then? The 0 or the negative 3? Negative three. The negative 3. It's where it hits the Y axis, okay? So it's hitting it at negative 3 for the Y value. So you're just going to write that as Y equals 1 fifth X. Um, you can say plus a negative 3. It's simpler to just write it as minus 3. So that would be the equation of that line. See if you can find the equation of B. So slope intercept form, how would you write letter B there in slope intercept? Your slope, yeah, so you're going to start one more time here. You're going to start here, the farthest left point, and you're going to go down and over. So that's negative 3 down over 1. So that means your slope is negative 3 over 1 or just negative 3. What's your y-intercept? What's your b value? 4. So you're going to say y equals negative 3 times x plus 4. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. Um, Example three it says write this equation in slope intercept form. What are the slope and the y intercept? Here's what I need you to think. If I'm putting something into slope intercept form, what am I solving for? What am I isolating? Get y by itself, right? So if I want it in slope intercept form, looking at this letter A here, I need to get y alone. How do I get y alone? I would take away 5x from both sides, yep. Um, can I combine these? 16 minus 5x? No. No. Um, so this is a negative 4y. Those are not like terms. I always put it into mx plus b. It's not wrong to say 16 minus 5x, um, but habit for me is always put it into the mx plus b form. So I would put the negative 5x first, and then it's a positive... 16. And now how do I solve for y? Divide by negative 4. So we're going to divide by negative 4 everywhere. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do it on the other side also. So this is 1. Um, what's negative 5x over negative 4? Keep it in a fraction form. Is it positive or negative? 
it's positive, right? A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this is going to be positive 5 fourths times x. And then this, 16 over negative 4, is going to be minus 4. So this would be your slope-intercept form. What's your slope? 5 fourths. What's your y-intercept? negative four, right? Minus four there, we're treating that as a negative four. Slope intercept. Wanna try B on your own? This one's a little bit trickier, but very doable. Give it a go. See if you can figure that one out. So isolate the y. How do you get y by it? Um, okay, so what did you do first? Yeah, John. Add three yes, you do. Add 3 fourths x. Okay, so right now this is gone. I have 1 half y equals, I would put the 3 fourths x at the beginning, minus 1. Okay, now here's where I saw a lot of you dividing by a half, which is not wrong. It's just odd. It's hard to do. Um, so if you divide by a half, then you have to like train your brain how to do that or plug it into your calculator how you do that, um, which is fine also. But the easier option here, instead of dividing by a half, would be to multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one half? 2 over 1, right? So really, you're just multiplying by 2, but you have to multiply this whole side by 2, okay? Um, so this is y equals, so 2 times this and 2 times that. Don't forget to distribute to both of them. Um, what's 2 times 3 eighths? Three, sorry. <laughs> 3 fourths. What's 2 times 3 fourths? 6 fourths. Um, so 6 fourths x minus what? Two. What's a better way to write six four six? Three halves, right? Or 1.5. I would leave it as the fraction. The fraction is much more helpful because if you turn it into 1.5, you can't graph that. And eventually we'll be doing some graphing with this stuff like very soon. Um, so just call this three halves x minus two. Okay. Um, so that means your slope is three halves. Um, the book will write the intercept as zero, negative two. I don't care if you just call that y-intercept negative two. Either way is fine with me. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, let's graph. Pay attention because inevitably graphing is the thing that tends to leave people the quickest, I feel like. So if I lost you, come back to me now. Um, if I want to graph y equals x minus 4, first of all, what do you plot first? The slope or the y-intercept? The y-intercept, okay? Every time, do the y-intercept first, and then your second part is to plot the slope. So if my y-intercept right now is a negative 4, am I moving left 4 or down 4? down four. It's a y intercept, right? So you should be on the y axis. So you're going to go down four, one, two, three, four, right here. And then what's your slope right now? Yeah, there's nothing out in front. So that's a one, right? Which means technically one over one. So from here, we're going up one to the right one and plotting that point. And you can do a few points. Um, you don't, you only technically need two, but I just like to have a nice straight line. So up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, and you get that line. Okay. Questions on that? Slope intercept. How is B different? What? Solve for what? Y. y. Yeah, we want it in y equals mx plus b form. So you're going to add the 2x to both sides. So we get y equals 2x plus 1. So what do I plot first? The 1. You're going to go up 1, a positive 1. Okay, hear me right now. Do not move right 1. It is not an x-intercept. It is a y-intercept. 
So I'll go up one, okay? And then from there, a slope of two is essentially two over one, right? So you're going rise two, run one, rise two, run one. And this is your graph. Um, how, oh, what are we doing there? I don't want a camera. Hmm. It doesn't do weird things. Um, shoot, is that gonna, there we go. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying before my camera went wiggy on me? I don't remember. You try this one, letter C. What do you have to do first? This one's trickier. It's got more numbers to it. Put it into what form? Y equals MX plus B. Okay, so put that into slope intercept form. And then we will graph from there. So solve for Y. What's your first step in solving for Y? Not a rhetorical question. What do you do first? Take away the 4X, yeah. All right, so try to solve that. See if you can graph it. We'll go from there. What did you get for you, your uh, equation? What does it look like? Y equals what? What's your slope? It's a weird one. So if yours is weird, that's okay. Negative 4 over 7, right? You would divide by 7, divide by 7, divide by 7. So Y equals negative 4 sevenths times X plus 2. All right, so plot that. Where's the 2 moving? Up or to the right? Up. Move it up. Do not move to the right. Guys, I see it all the time. People just keep moving to the right. Don't move to the right, okay? It is a y-intercept, and this is your y-axis. So that should always be your starting point. Where do I go on that vertical axis, okay? Plot the two. And then where do you move for negative four-sevenths? Down how many? Down four. And then where for the seven? To the left or to the right? To the right. It will always be to the right, okay? If you're moving down for the four, you'll move to the right for the seven. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven puts us right here, which gives us, your line will be the straighter because you're probably in notability. Okay, questions on that? Okay, last two of this one then. Notice these are different. Y equals negative 3, so there's no X, and X equals 2, no Y. These are very specific types of lines. Here's what I need you to think, because a lot of people get these mixed up, but these should actually be very easy problems. This is saying Y is always negative 3. So name a point for me that has a Y value of negative 3. About zero negative three right has a y value of negative three give me another point that has a y value of negative three pick a number one one negative three two negative three right those all have a y value of negative three well zero negative three is here one negative three is here, two negative three is here, three negative three, four negative three, five negative three, six negative three. No matter where I go, my y value is negative three. What kind of line is that? It's horizontal, right? So whenever you see y equals with no x value, you should think that's a horizontal line. Y equals is horizontal. Um, if you flip a Y over, doesn't it kind of look like an H for horizontal? Y equals is always horizontal if there's no X with it, OK? 
okay? So what do you think x equals is gonna be? Vertical. If my x value's gotta be two, think two, zero, two, one, two, two. Those points, two, zero, two, one, two, two, would make a line right here, right? So x equals is always vertical. I always say an x is kind of like a v with a v upside down, right? Two v's vertical for your x. Um, so x equals will always be a vertical line, y equals will always be horizontal. Questions on that? <laughs>